I discuss a lot of stuff on this channel, mainly microphones and everything associated with them, and trying to help people figure out which microphone is for them. But in this video, I'm going to explain to you that this one thing about every microphone is the most important thing you should look at. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the frequency response curve and why it is the most important thing about a microphone. And I truly believe that statement. And of course, it's only my opinion, and other people might think differently, but I really do feel it's the most important thing because it really shows how the microphone was tuned and how that will reflect in how it's going to sound. There are variables that contradict that a little bit in tone and in how you hear it, but for the most part, it shows you how the microphone is supposed to sound. So to start off, let's get a basic foundation of a frequency response. And according to dictionary.com, it says a graph of frequency response with signal amplitude or gain plotted against frequency. Now, this basically means that a frequency response of anything, mainly microphones in this situation, I think it applies to a bunch of other things with the Hertz graph, but with a frequency response curve in this, we're strictly doing Hertz and decibels as our graph. So frequency response curve, basically a curve in which you see how the microphone was tuned and how those frequencies are emphasized or brought down in certain specific sections. Now that we know what a frequency response curve is and what frequency response is, let's talk about what can you gain from using this chart and using this range. Now, it takes a lot of practice to understand the relativity between the chart and the waves and all the peaks and valleys to the actual tone of the microphone. This takes listening, this takes actually going out and using the microphones and actually looking and doing the research to relate these things together. With frequency response curves, you gotta have an understanding of if I have a peak around 4K in my higher end, what does that translate to in tone of what I'm going to hear? And also, is that peak drastic or is that peak kind of just there and, and just giving you a little bit, not too much? Now, I'm not saying that this will give you every answer. I'm not saying it's going to give you every understanding of what a microphone is. You still have to listen to the microphone. You still have to hear these signals properly. But for the most part, if you look at a chart, you could get a good idea of what you're going to be getting into with the microphone. And one more thing before we go into the next section, a good pair of cans. Headphones are huge with understanding tone and how things are heard properly. For around $100, you could get a decent pair of headphones. Uh, Sony makes a good pair, Audio-Technica. Those are the brands that people usually go to. Behringer, I don't know much about, but I hear people saying good things about them, obviously. Sennheiser is probably the best, but no one wants to spend that kind of money. Well, not no one, but regular folk don't want to spend that much. I might spend that much because I'm a crazy person. So with that understanding and with all that information, the next thing is let's break it down into all the sections that you may encounter. And chances are most microphones go from 20 hertz to 20 thousand hertz or 20 kilohertz depending on how you see it or how you want to say it and there are different sections amongst all of this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to break it down into five categories lows low mids mids high mids and the highs now in between there is a presence area there are so many different areas you could go into but this is a general idea of where these things land and of course you might have different opinions on where one starts and one stops, but for the most part, this is a general idea of where it's going to land. So back to the low, zero to 300. This is where you're going to see a lot of your low frequency percussion, bass, guitar, and when it comes to music, you got trap music, techno music, and all that like bumping kind of area, and you would have that rumble in your chest kind of feel. 
if you're like me, you like techno and things that have like a nice beat to it. So I like that feel. Some people don't like it. Some people are not into it. But those are where those frequencies are and giving you an understanding and a relativity of where you're going to hear those tones. It's about understanding the combination of these are the numbers and this is what it is on a chart compared to how do I hear it, combining those senses to work together. Now we go into the low mids, which starts at 300 and roughly goes to about 500. This is where some people's voices land in my particular voice. It lands in this area. Sometimes it can come off a little money around that like four or 500 area. So a lot of people like to cut those. For me, I cut it a little bit. I did a video on this microphone uh, covering one year with it and giving like my perspective one year later. I did a little EQ at the end and that was an area where I did change it. Now, of course, every microphone is different and every person is different. So that combination of two different things and then preference of EQ could change all the time. There are endless amounts of ideas and endless amounts of tweaks that you can make. But for me personally, in all those categories, microphone, my voice, and my preference, preferential treatment of the microphone and the EQ, that is what I do. Around that 400, I usually cut it a little bit because I don't really like that tone in my voice. Now, this range is considered lows and mids. So depending on who you talk to, they could keep a general idea of, oh, the lows are from 0 to 500. Fine. That's easy enough. But if you are picky and you are specific low mids usually land in that section as you move into the mids and as I was saying they can come off a little muddy depending on the source and some examples that usually land in that section is some brass yeah. instruments and alto saxophone and mid-range clarinets now these are just a few examples of many that you may encounter that run into that range of low mids and again to get a relativity of sound to range. Moving on to the mids where most of our voices land. Most of our voices land in those mids. And you try to not take them out completely, but you want to suppress them a little bit when it comes to spoken word, of course. And when it comes to other things like acoustic guitar and electric guitar, uh, other types of things, those highs and lows, you try to play around with those and kind of get those mids a little bit, like, suppressed a little bit. Certain situations do call for more mids and a mid-forward thing. Like, if you're looking for a boxy kind of sound or, like, a, a percussion instrument and more boxy kind of sound, those mids could come into play and really help you out. Now, with the high mids, roughly around 2 to 4K, and... That's probably in your like female voices or people with a higher pitched voice. They they usually lean into that high mids area. My voice usually in the low mids. Some people land in the high mids. So depending on the person, depending on the source, will land in that section. That's a tough one to figure out which one specifically. Female voices, I have seen that it they land in that section a lot. Now with the highs, 4K to 20k i know it's a huge section and a lot of this when you get into that high into the 15 to 20 it starts to dissipate it starts to get into the point where you can't hear it as a human dogs can hear much more their range is much more vast than us but that's just a byproduct of being a dog and dog whistles i don't know the exact i'll leave it up here uh what the frequency is but that's basically it. Now, in that section, you have a presence area, roughly around 4 to 6K. Now, this presence section is usually spoken uh, about in vocals. It's spoken about in so many different varieties of tones because it's a presence boost. You might have heard that before uh, with your microphones or some type of editing of EQ. You might say, hey, I want some more presence on that. So presence is between the 4 and 6k like in the high end section where it's not piercing but it's it's that nice fluttery like warm tone that you're looking for and of course like I said and like I always say 
depending on the source, depending on what you put into it, will be more or, more or less depending on the source. Keep that in mind. Now, most things that you would find in here, harmonica, violin, piccolo, very high-pitched things, when you get a little higher past the 6K, you get more piercing sounds. So you might want to suppress those a little bit or maybe even emphasize it depending on what sound you're going for. With the piccolo and the violin, you can get nice tones out of those higher upper in the 10 to 15k you could get some nice tones there and you got to play around with it and you make sure that it's not too piercing i don't know if you're a piccolo player but if or if you're a flute player or someone like that if you're into brass instruments or if you were in bands i was in band i played trombone when i was in high school uh if you were in band or if you play any of these instruments that i've mentioned let me know down in the comments and we could talk about our band days now that i've gone over the frequency response the frequency response curves and the relative tones and sources that may go into those specific categories let's go back to the original question why is the frequency response curve the most important thing about a microphone i said before it's because it shows how the microphone was tuned but to go a step further and probably even more relative to a lot of people it shows how a microphone is visually so you could understand it audibly. So if you can see it, you can hear it in a roundabout way. It's kind of like if you see a horn honking, like a, like a clown horn, but you don't hear it, you got a good idea of what it sounds like. That is why I feel so strong about the fact that a frequency response curve is the most important thing about a microphone and that all being said thank you all for watching hope you all enjoyed it if you liked the video please hit the like button down below It'd be greatly appreciated it really does help this video really does help this channel and it gets out to more people me trying to uh educate people about audio and uh gear and everything like that of course i don't know everything I'm not perfect and I might have missed something and I probably did miss something in this video. So if you have anything to say, any comments, questions or anything whatsoever down in the comments section, all I ask is you be nice and constructive and it's a discussion. It's not an argument. That basically is what I'm trying to get at. And if you want to talk to me directly, I stream on this channel as well. Also to take discussions further, the discord is available as well where you can join it and uh, talk to other people within the community that's growing right now so it's really cool to have other people there to help each other out i might not be available so someone else could help you or someone could have a better insight than i do about a specific topic so join that and same rules apply just be nice constructive and no arguments just discussions and one more thing if you like my vibe around here and everything going on tech reviews mic reviews my comparisons all that stuff please consider subscribing it would mean a lot and that's all i got for you until next time Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Yard sale. Yard sale. Oh dear. Uh -oh. oh wait, that was not a man. Oh dear, sweet baby Jesus. I'm trying. I'm in the ball hole. Oh, dear sweet Jesus. Oh God. Where? Where are our men? Oh, where's the men? Where's the men at? Oh sh. Oh, I'm out of. I was out of. I was out of sword.